Hi, I'm Jadi. Hope you are doing well. Uh, we are continuing our LPIC journey. Now we've reached 109. Congratulations. This is about network. 110 is about security, if I'm right. And it's done. You will know your LPIC. The whole 109, especially 109.1 fundamentals of internet protocols, might be a little bit difficult or confusing if you are not familiar with computer networks, especially TCP IP and IP networks uh, in general. I highly recommend you, if you want to be a knowledgeable system admin or person, study Network Plus by yourself or CCNA. If you enjoyed that, go and read CCIE. CCIE certificate people are highly, highly knowledgeable on uh, computer networks for sure. You may change your branch from system admin and Linux to networks. Anyway, I will try to describe as clear as I can, but in general, this is a confusing concept if you are not into TCP IP. One good I, uh, thing is I'm describing way, way more than what you need on your LPIC, trying to give you a general understanding of everything. You should know about all of these. I will try to describe everything in three parts. First, speak about computer networks, IP in general. In one part, I will try to describe IP subnetting. And then we will talk about network protocols. Uh, now that I'm going to have three videos, I have enough time to tell you the history. In the beginning days of networking, we had different ideas about networking. For example, we had ring networks. We had four computers. We wanted to create a network. We would create a ring with cables. And if you wanted to transmit something from one computer to the other one, you would put it on the ring. It will go through all the computers and the computers, which was the destination, would pick up the packet. Very strange idea nowadays. If one cable was cut, whole network would be done. Down. Every computer were able to see every single packet and other issues. Very strange. Later, we had, for example, uh, star networks. You had one central computer controlling the networks and everyone was connected to that one. So this was controlling the flow. Still strange because you had to create lots and lots of cables. You were not able to create something like internet using this strategy. Very silly for these days. Uh, different ideas came and went and stayed and we reached the TCP IP stack. We call it the transmission control protocol and internet protocol. I won't go into the depths of this, but in general, think about it like this. You have IP and you provide IP to your computers and this will let your computers to speak with each other. For example, if you have another computer here, you can connect it to this one. And it is possible for this computer to speak with this. If you have another one here, you could just create different links between computers. Anyway, you like it. It's like a anarchistic random connections between different computers. And since IP is working, each of these do have an IP, they will find their way to speak with each other. This is the IP part. IP part will let computers to connect to each other, find each other on the network. Then we have the TCP part. When talking about the TCP, I'm talking about how computers are going to transmit data to each other. Packets of data going through the wires between the computers. This is a very, very, very rough general understanding of the whole thing. The thing that you should know about 
is TCP IP has more protocols than TCP and IP. It's a huge stack of protocols. It has UDP, ICMP, DNS, and other stuff. But in short, we call it TCP IP. Let's speak about IP first in this session in very general concept. And then we will move to TCP ports, protocols, and this kind of stuff. You've seen IP, IPs many, many, many times. IPs are something like this one. These are IP version 4s. They consist of three different parts separated by a dot. Each part, or as we call them, octets, octet, like octopus, do have two to the power of eight bits in them. That's why octet eight, like octopus. You have X, you have A, B, C, D. Each is between zero to two, five, five. Zero to two, five, five. Zero to two, five, five. Zero to two to the power of eight, which is two, five, five. So eight bits on each octet. 32 bits in general. Each address in IP version 4 can be represented by a number between 0 to the 2.2 2 to the power of 32. Because this is difficult to talk about, we always represent our IP version 4 addresses in the form of something dot something dot something dot something. And each of these are 0 to 255, which is 8 bits. So each can have 2 to the power of 8. In total, we can have 2 to the power of 32 IP version 4, which is about 4.3 billion addresses. These are all valid IP4 addresses. You've seen them in different places uh, and in different areas so if i have a network i will have different devices my tablet my phone my refrigerator my toaster my smart watch my smart tv my car my window which can be opened via request my smart lamp bulb whatever each of these do have one ip for example this one can be 192 168, 110. This one will be 112. This one will be 150. This is what is happening in your home. This is 192, 168, 100. This is 101. These are all in one network in my house and all of them do connect to my wireless router here, which has the IP address of 192, 168, 11. And this is connected to my ISP. My ISP gives this device an address like, for example, 112.11.2.168, for example. This is the public IP address of my network. These are private addresses. We will see about them later. And this goes to my ISP, and my MySP is connected to the general internet. And there are other machines here. So if I want to connect from my mobile phone to the server, practically, this is what happens. This device with this IP address sends a request to my router. My router changes the IP to this one because I need a valid IP, public IP. I will go to the internet, will talk with this device. The data will return back. My rotor will send the data back to this machine. This is how the general idea of the internet works. This is called natting. This thing that my rotor changes the IP address of this device and goes and returns back and gives back the answer. But why do we have this complication? Why we are not having 
specific IPs to be used for every single device. Easy, because we had two to the power of 32 IPs at most on IP version four. So only 4.3 billion IPs and no more. This is not enough for every single device at the current level of usage. To manage this, only 4 billion addresses, there is an entity called Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA. Each country can go to IANA and buy a class of IPs. For example, I may buy a class of uh, class A IPs. If you are a huge company, you may go and buy three class B ranges. And the IANA says, okay, from now on, one, two, for example, nine, one, zero, zero is yours. You can change these in your own company and you have two, five, six, two, five, six IPs for yourself. This is how you should buy IPs. But in not only recent years, even in the recent decade, decade, it is not possible to buy any new range because all of them are taken by uh, countries in the first level, sometimes companies. If you have an ISP, you should go to your company, get some IP ranges for your ISP and this kind of stuff. There are no more available and free IP version for uh, to be bought by you. That's why when you go to a VPS, a cloud hosting company, buy a virtual server, if you get an IP version 4, you might be charged $1 per month for it. If you want one more, you should pay extra or the same, or you should write a letter and say, this is the reason I need one more IP version 4, because we don't have enough IP version 4 for everyone. The solution for this is having these private ranges. They say, okay, we have 4.3 billion IPs. You can assign this on the internet and machines will work with each other. But if you are in a home and you want to assign some IPs to your devices, use one of these ranges. This is why you see lots of 192.168.1 something or 10 point something 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 these are the three private ranges that everyone can use one is 192 168 whatever whatever another one is 172 16 till 31 only whatever whatever and the last one which is larger is 10 whatever 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 that's why where in your home you see 192.168 for example 100 that often or zero something this is less used 10 is also used a lot on the server world and you can use it whenever you want there is no rule it's just a custom so a server might have one zero one one as its private ip and another ip on the internet so 10 servers if you have 10 servers you can give them 10 0 1 1 10 0 1 2 1 3 these machines will see each other in their network i will talk about it a little bit later and if they want to go out they should have a public ip Another private IP range is 172, 16 to 31, 172, X, Y. Anyway, or Y, as most people call it. And this is how it works in general. And the next part, I will talk about subnetting and will continue this one. These are not separated discussions. You have to watch these three videos one by one but i will cover a little bit about ip version 4 
while we are talking about the general concept of networks and IPs. You saw that A, B, C, D separated by a dot is a representation of an IP version 4. And we can have 2 to the power of 32 or 4.3 billion IP version 4s at most. This is problematic, as you saw. We had to create private IP range to uh, assign them to our internal networks. We were not able to use uh, public IPs for all of our devices and lots of other problems. You cannot have duplicated IPs. You will get strange errors and you may be kicked out of your company. Uh, to solve these problems, IPv6 was introduced. IPv6 can have 2 to the power of 1 to 8 IPs. This is super, super unbelievable huge. Every one number is multiplied by 2. If you have this much, you will reach to this number. This is super unbelievable huge. It is calculated that if you give IPs for every observable star in the known universe, each star will get this many IPs, to do the power of 52, still an unbelievable number. So at least based on our current understandings, IP version 6 has enough IPs for whatever humanity might but it's much, much larger. So you cannot represent it with decimal numbers, especially with four uh, octets. The way we represent our IP version 6 is using 16 base, which is called base, base hex. You know the bases, right? In the next video, I will talk a little bit more about binary bases when we only talk about zeros and ones normal life using uh, base 10, which is 0 till 9. So, for example, we say 99, we say 16. On base hex or base 16, we use the digits 0 till f, which is 16 in decimal. 15, technically. Anyway, so it's base 16, so because we started from 0. So, we represent IP version 6 like this. We give four digits, 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 four digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight multiplied by four digits, each to have 16 bits. Because you can see, these are 16-bit numbers. So this is how we talk about IP version 6. But this is a little bit difficult to write. There are different shorthands. For example, this one, we can say, okay, this, 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 this. Then we have zeros. So instead of all these zeros, we write nothing. One. Much easier. We omitted these zeros, also this zero, this zero, and wrote it like this, and used this shorthand to show this. Hmm. Much, 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 much better. We can give valid IP version 6 to every single device in the humanity with no problem. That's why it was invented. This is what you should know about IP version 6. You will see more and more of IP version 6. At the first time you see it, it's kind of frightening because we are used to IP version 4s. But in normal life, you just use IP version 6 and everything works. Luckily, we are not system network admins. We are system. Anyway, let's go to the next video and talk about subnet.